flames here and I'm probably not going to use my mic for now because I want to get this finished quickly since this is recording at 9 p.m. on Friday which I was supposed to do it hours ago and I was busy on other things so uh, yeah um, here we are for this one another SCP video <laughs> by that familiar youtuber which did amazing on making those videos. Tats top videos. And please support the channel. Alright folks? Get the channel is down but it's in the description, the link. Well I may not talk that much because I'm going to listen very closely. Or just listen to the video, that's all. Enjoy. Dead Space or War Games. Because have you all played Dead Space? SCP-2473. Object Class? Safe. SCP-2473 is an atmospheric re-entry vehicle of anomalous origins. It has no external marks and possesses a form of ion propulsion. A living quarters and cockpit has been identified. Much of the craft's interior is filled with computer hardware, apparatus for recycling air and human waste, and a retractable photovoltaic panel. All hardware within 2473 appears to have suffered many centuries of oxidization. The apparatus for recycling human waste failed before recovery, while the oxygen recycling system was still operational. All internal markings are in a language not currently extant to Earth. Translation efforts are ongoing. SCP-24731 refers to 11 identical chairs designed as brain-computer interfaces. The devices are equipped with polymer catheters designed to remove waste and provide nutrients, alongside several electrodes designed to directly interface with the nervous systems of occupants. 24731 instances are arranged in a V formation within SCP-2473's primary chamber. Only one instance was occupied at recovery was found in a desiccated, mummified state. Radiocarbon dating, genetic testing, and chemical analysis of bones and teeth have proven inconclusive on racial identity, lifestyle, and age. 24732 was female and approximately 60 to 70 years old at time of death. All computer hardware and sensor devices were functional at time of recovery. As such, maintaining charge on SCP-2473's power cells is considered a priority. SCP-2473 is currently stored in Hangar 37 of Site-43. Efforts in restoration and reverse engineering of the object are ongoing. Normal procedures for delicate artifacts such as those found within it are in effect. Exposure of SCP-2473's photovoltaic panel to sunlight is required for no less than 4 hours daily. Testing with SCP-2473-1 instances is restricted to D-Class personnel with a preference for neurologically healthy individuals. Individual test subjects are given at least two weeks to recover between experiments. Normal procedures for testing surgical apparatus are in effect, though at this time. Testing with the objects is suspended. Restoration of SCP-24731 instances is the primary priority for restoration crews because of their fragility. SCP-24732 is currently in cryogenic storage at Site-43. On February 29, 2020, SCP-2473 landed at a discrete military base in the Nevadan Desert, following several months of in-near orbit, apparently having intentionally navigated there. SCP-2473 was successfully transported covertly to Site-43 with further investigation of the object resulting in its current containment status. SCP-2722 Object Class Euclid SCP-2722 is a partially completed spacecraft currently in orbit at about the L4 Lagrangian point. The vessel in its current state is 25.3 kilometers long 
and is 6 kilometers across at its widest point. Though, due to its state of partial deconstruction, its final dimensions are unclear. Most of its outer hull is coated with a series of retractable graphene plates with an albedo of 0.03, apparently serving as an anti-detection measure. How it regulates heat absorbed by this plating is currently not understood. The only prominent markings on the outer plating are a series of letters in 647 meter tall block printing using an unknown pictographic script which SCP-2722-1 generally translates to Vessel built by an organization for maintaining normalcy, solidarity. Buildup of cosmic dust on the object's outer surfaces indicate the vessel has been present at its current location for at least 150 million years. The means by which the stability of its orbit is maintained is unclear. The object does not appear to have undergone any major meteorite impacts or collisions, though there is limited evidence of a micrometeorite impact damage on the bow plating. Much of SCP-2722's internal volume is contained in a series of modules which have been detached from the vessel's main hull, apparently in preparation for dismantling or retrofitting. These modules include living spaces, weapon arrays, a diverse variety of power plants, and propulsion systems. SCP-2722 is currently powered by 45 catalog electrical power systems, most of them derivations of conventional nuclear fission or fusion concepts. How the vessel's power system remains stable or functional despite its great age is currently unknown. SCP-2722-1 is a mimetic carrier effect which alters human perception of any written material brought within a 27.8 km radius of 2722 or any original component thereof. This effect extends only to the comprehension of meaning. Test subjects exposed to simple messages in languages they did not know were able to accurately grasp the meaning of those messages with an average accuracy in excess of 95%, but were unable to demonstrate any understanding of the phonemes associated with those written characters. Foundation Orbital Research Compound O4 has been established in a litigious orbit at about the L4 Lagrangian point where SCP-2722 is located. Foundation assets liaise with all the global space programs ensure that any spacecraft which pass close enough to L4 or FORC-04 to detect 2722 have their mission data suitably altered or deleted. In order to minimize the risk of accidental damage of 2722 by previously intercepted craft, the object's albedo plating is maintained in a deployed state except during transfer of personnel. Several repurposed orbital monitoring satellites have been redeployed in orbit around SCP-2722 to assist with mapping efforts. For the purpose of exploring and studying SCP-2722, two orbital task forces have been stationed on FORC-04. While the SCP-2722-1 effect is not considered to be contagious, any and all personnel leaving the immediate vicinity of SCP-2722 or FORC-04 are administered C-class amnestics and standard counter memes to minimize the risk of potential spread. SCP-2117, Object Class, Thaumiel. SCP-2117 refers to an irregularly shaped space station of unknown origin currently orbiting Titan, the largest moon of the planet Saturn. The interior dimensions exceed that of the exterior due to the use of Augustine non-Euclidean stabilization engines. The hull is made up of an iridium titanium beryllium alloy and 90% of the ship is covered with markings of a single phrase written in over 500 languages, SCPS Solidarity. SCP-2117 appears to be an amalgam of at least 73 different spacefaring craft and space stations. Of these, 15 of the craft and 12 of the stations are identical. The Augustine non-Euclidean stabilization engines aid the craft in maintaining its cohesion 
as exploration has indicated that the disparate parts are joined not through welding or other joining techniques, but through violation of the Pauli exclusion principle. SCP-21171 refers to a pseudo-memetic anomaly present on board. It automatically translates all writing inscribed onto the surfaces within the craft, including furniture, structural components, and technology. Writing must be physically inscribed or embossed. Printed writing is not affected by 21171. Inscriptions translated by SCP-21171 are often used as a guide to operating 2117's anomalous technology in items present named 2117A. SCP-2117 is currently situated in orbit around Titan, but may be freely used to move throughout the solar system in order to combat extraterrestrial or extrastellar threats. The weapons capabilities of SCP-2117 are listed in the user's manual in document 2117-alpha. There are currently no plans to use 2117 as means of interstellar travel. However, as it is home to a Bailey King multi-universal transit array, there is currently an outpost for the Department of Multi-Universal Affairs on board. SCP-2986 Object Class Safe <laughs> SCP-2986 is a cardboard box that was originally utilized in Soldier. the delivery of a refrigeration a unit. When it is entered and sealed, the object will take on the appearance of the interior of a spacefaring vessel. Technology within the vessel is beyond that of current human development, but appears to be designed for the use of humanoid individuals. The vessel can be exited through manual operation of a decompression chamber located in the ship's rear. While outside of the vessel, one is subject to a vacuum. The vessel is capable of moving at speeds faster than light and appears to have an unlimited fuel supply. Despite this and years of testing, no other object, life forms, or planetary bodies have been found within 2986. The vessel's operating system utilizes a variant combination of Spanish and Chinese. Several written and recorded logs in English have been recovered from the computer systems that originated in the vessel's three decomposed occupants. The ship's crew were listed as Pirate Jimmy Billings, deceased at 55, Sarah Ackerman, deceased at 55, Captain Billy Abraham, deceased at 56, and Mary Jones, missing. Written records by these individuals indicate that the vessel encountered various life forms during the first 12 days of use by these individuals, then sparingly for seven years afterwards. There is no record of an encounter for the remaining 43 years. SCP-2986 is kept on floor 9 of Site-88. Any person wishing to use SCP-2986 must have approval from personnel with at least level 2 security clearance. Any objects recovered within SCP-2986 are housed in a secure locker adjacent to the chamber. SCP-2777 Object Class Euclid SCP-2777 is a roughly cylindrical artificial structure approximately 36 kilometers long. Its average radius is approximately 600 meters. Most of it is buried, what although protrusions from the main body are visible what from the surface. That? Radiocarbon dating reveals that it has been buried for at least years. 2777 is constructed out of an unknown substance which bears superficial similarities to rock and shows no signs of deterioration. Exploratory teams have discovered that the interior is divided into seven large cross-sectional chambers which are connected via a series of tunnels. All chambers have been explored, while tunnels are still being found and mapped. Several tunnels are blocked by debris or collapsed entirely. Almost all tunnels leading to its central chamber are sealed by large gateways. One gateway remains open, allowing access. Upon entering the central chamber, subjects leave Earth's gravitational field and enter a vacuum which strongly resembles outer space. What? 
The other gateways are seen suspended inside the chamber at locations consistent with their placement inside 2777. The stars visible from the central chamber correspond to the stars seen in the Milky Way galaxy. SCP-2777-1 is suspended at the center of the central chamber. It is a humanoid entity that bears visual similarity to a male human child, although X-ray CT and PET scans have revealed several internal anatomical anomalies. Telepathic communications, preserved to be from it, can be heard inside the central chamber. Its breathing, heartbeat, and metabolical rates are extremely slow. Furthermore, it has not been ever recorded to move, suggesting that, while it is conscious, its body is in a state of stasis. Reality-altering events occur sporadically inside and around SCP-2777. The most common location for the events is inside the chambers. These events are associated with SCP-2777-1. Reality warping events usually restructure and replace the inside of the chamber with newly fabricated setting. Events are typically more dangerous when not localized to the chambers. Typically, reconstruction settings have characteristics that do not appear to be terrestrial, although the settings disappear too quickly for any investigations to be launched. Biological sapient beings have occasionally appeared as a result of the restructuring events, although these beings are uniformly disorientated and usually hostile. These entities disappear once the restructuring event ends. SCP-2777-1 and then return, correct? That is correct, Alpha. I want to know what the priority of this mission is. We've already mapped an additional 20% of the structure. In the event of another restructuring event and possible hostile response... The orders are the same as they were when your team was briefed. This is top priority. Roger. Let's go. SCP-2771 in communication. Roger that. You? I spoke to you. I'm warning you. Don't come any closer. Control, we've got visual contact with the skip. Starting preliminary bioscans. Why? Why are you doing this? Who are you people? Scans complete. Skip's in stasis. Lucky us. Yeah, man, sleep and dreams. Nothing bad will happen because of sleep and dreams, right? Listen to me. I can give you whatever you want. Just get away from me and you'll have it. The caller is prepped. Initiating calibration process. As it began, there was darkness throughout the tunnels of my mind. A stillness in my flesh. An emptiness in my soul. Doesn't sound good. How's that caller coming? It's locked. Let's go. But then, did I wake? and feel the chains that shackled my body. Then did I see the blood of the sky above. Then did I witness tyrants circle to destroy my lord, my king. Skip thinks it's Shakespeare. The water of the mind is pure from the blood of innocence. We took these things so many times in your equipment. Avoid the water. Get out. Do you want for my power? He's dead. We have to...
SCP-2226 Object Class Euclid SCP-2226 is an extraterrestrial escape craft composed entirely of antimatter. The object is ellipsoid in shape and constructed from an alloy of the antimatter counterparts of iron, tin, and nickel with a mass of 847 kilograms. It has eight maneuvering thrusters arranged in two sets of four around each of its ends. In the center of SCP-2226, there is a 0.73 meter wide circular transparent hatch through which the object's interior is visible. SCP-2226 broadcasts a 2.15 kHz radio transmission lasting for approximately 5 seconds every 7 seconds. Transmission contents vary slightly from broadcast to broadcast and seem to express the object's positional coordinates for any vessels within range of the signal. Inside SCP-2226 is a compact control panel with several knobs and levers that seem to control the object's maneuvering thrusters and radio transmitter. Alien right there. In the center of the panel is a tactile display which individually raises and lowers to indicate internal and external conditions. Underneath the panel is a storage chest containing a small, strained instrument composed of metal. The interior floor is littered with 14 empty metal containers, once holding an unidentified purple paste. Beside the control panel is a vaguely humanoid entity resting within what is believed to be a suspended animation chamber. Designated as SCP-226-1, the entity measures 2.45 meters in height. Its skin is a deep mouth and possesses two pairs of upper limbs and a single pair of lower limbs, connected to its torso. SCP-22261 lacks a distinct head and instead has its main sensory structure centered in its torso as no eyes or photoreceptive organs are visible on the creature's body. It is assumed to perceive its surroundings though through echolocation. Its visible teeth suggest a carnivorous or omnivorous diet, though it has been only observed eating onboard provisions. Given that the tank has not yet been exhausted and appears to be connected to the interior wall, SCP-2226 likely has an onboard system that removes waste products from and recirculates exhaled gas. It is unknown how long the vital processes of SCP-22261 will remain in suspension or how long the radio transmitter of SCP-2226 will remain functional. SCP-2226 is suspended within the 1000 Tesla paramagnetic field of a standard anti-material containment unit which is constantly monitored by one technician and two armed security personnel. The unit housing 2226 is held within an approximately sized chamber supplied electricity indefinitely with a power supply connected to two backup reactors. The chamber is lined with a material suitable for blocking the 2.15 kHz radio transmissions broadcasted from it. SCP-2226 is stored at Lunar Site 13. Terrestrial storage would be needlessly problematic as a containment breach during atmospheric re-entry would have catastrophic consequences and create immense censorship difficulties. Four more to go. SCP-1778, Object Class, Euclid. SCP-1778 is to date the only known spaceship of the Soyuz 7KL2 series. Designed and placed in orbit in 1966 as part of a special program developed and financed by the Psychotronics Division of Russian Main Intelligence Directorate and has been contacted from different points of the surface since its discovery through brief radio exchanges with unknown interlocutors. While flying over the territories of the former Soviet Union, it seems to behave as any satellite or orbiter. However, in the moment of passing over the Prime Meridian, it decelerates through an unknown means and adopts an orbit that takes it in the opposite direction, then accelerating rapidly until it reaches Meridian 170. When it resumes its previous orbit and speed, during this period, it accelerates until it reaches an estimated speed of 0.09 c, with transmissions of anomalous nature during the 0.3 seconds being transmitted from it. While it has been hypothesized that these transmissions do contain information, all attempts at deciphering thus far have failed. SCP-1778 has been marked as orbital debris from a failed uncrewed Soviet mission. All embedded agents of the Foundation within the most relevant space agencies observe it and prevent all research or interaction initiative related to it. Different recovery and disposal measures are being studied at the time, and remain pending approval from Level 4 authorities until possible future connections with 1778 are established. 
a MTF Beta-3 team remains in standby for these operations. SCP-1778 was detected for the first time in 1966 thanks to the interception of a message emitted within the German Democratic Republic, and came to the attention of Foundation agents through multiple contacts within the Karzanierte Volkspolizei. Seven K L two. Confirm. Can you hear us? Seven K L two. Confirm. Can you hear? Who are, who are you? I'm sorry. We prefer to remain anonymous at the time. Who am I speaking to? I repeat. Who are you? Rather not disclose this for the moment. What is your name, 7KL2? Volva. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, Volya. You are not from the division, are you? I'm afraid not. Right. It's been so long since they... I've been here so long I didn't even remember what it was like to talk. To talk to someone who is. It took us a while to figure out the method used to communicate with you, but we don't know how they managed to keep you alive in orbit for so long. Volya, are you alright? Ah, I'm alive. I didn't have the courage to do it, you know. Do what, Volya? Opening the hatch. I did not dare. Food and water would air me return. My own body may return. But I remember. They told me I would not remember. Do you understand? Remember. That it would be the same minutes every day. For three months and then... Wait, what? Oh, you do not know yet. Well, I guess it is the same. It is a network of modules. Connected to the station the division placed in orbit. I am nothing more than the archivist. They thought they could place everything they knew in a safe, orbiting the Earth. There are more modules than yours, then. Are they connected to it? I was never told the details of Alpha, but there is no information on them up here. I have looked, but yes. The station is a gateway. It was launched for the other modules that we made physically detached on quite a long time ago. Before I was launched. I've often wondered who had the idea. It's been so long. Yes, that is correct. I'm afraid I can't... Yes. I have been reading. I have been learning. There are novels or tales or encyclopedias up here. There are reports of many divisions' activities too. At least decades. Am I correct? Something like that. We'd rather not go into detail. Then I guess I am an exile now. I can never return home. Do you have any information that we may use to extract you and salvage your ship? I might actually. Is the division still active? Please, tell me what you need. Do you have any information on... Stand by, please. may have access to it. Good. Listen. I don't want to spend a single day further up here. I want to go back to Earth. I may have no place down there anymore. But I just want to see the sky. So, for all that I care, you can have this thing. The Archive. All of it. Just get... ...and use it to get me out of here. And you will have all that the Division knew up to 19. Deal? Deal. What do you propose? Spy fever. First.
right there, folks. SCP-2813. Object Class, Euclid. SCP-2813 is a formerly Russian interplanetary spacecraft roughly 600 meters long and 250 meters wide. It contains three individual non-corporeal operators, referred to as instances SCP-28131A, 1B, and 1C. 2813 appears to be a modified asteroid, currently utilized by its operators to perform a variety of observational tasks. SCP-28131 instances possess the physical traits of Konstantin Solkovsky, as he appeared in the 1910s. They have demonstrated limited knowledge of the course of world history past 1916, and their own records show a cessation of contact with the Earth in late 1917. The material makeup of SCP-2813 is consistent with other trans-Neptunian and Centaur objects. The majority of its mass consists of rocky silicates and metals, while a sizable percentage consists of water, ammonia, and carbon dioxide ice. SCP-2813 is significantly less massive than it would appear, though this is believed to be due to an internal rice structuring by SCP-28131A. SCP-2813 possesses no life support system due to several open observation ports near the center of the vessel. The entire construct remains unpressurized. Due to the semi-corporeal nature of its operators, this design does little to prevent operation of the ship. Containment of SCP-2813's anomalous nature is predicated on maintaining its current identification as 13 Catherine, the natural small solar system body. Government sanctioned missions to observe 13 Catherine, manned or otherwise, must be prevented in order to preserve containment. Due to its distance and small size, 13 Catherine's true nature is currently not known to terrestrial observers. Should the Russian Space Agency, or the GRUP, become aware of the true nature of SCP-2813, Orbital Task Force 3 is deployed to secure the object in Foundation custody. They maintain communication with 28131, as well as provide for any maintenance of the object instances they themselves cannot provide. To ensure continued cooperation from SCP-2813 instances, limited amenities may be provided when feasible upon request. Because I'm so much better made than my brothers. 
direct contract. I would have thought that much was clear. How are you made? Would you be surprised to learn that we've always been here? What do you mean? Our father did not know about this thing, but he built himself a new consciousness when he sent it out between the worlds to see what it could find. My sibling found his face. You know him as boy, I believe. SCP 2813 1A? I believe so, yeah. And what did it found this object? What did it do? He joined the visit, became a part of it, only became a part of him. The rock soul and the human soul became one and the same. He asked it to shape the rock to a form better suited for exploration. He created my brothers and myself afterward of the rock soul. We were fighting the process as he gained more knowledge. What was the original mission? He had been trying to reach the inner world, but his connection to this place was too valuable to waste. We were tasked with exploring the great planets. How long ago was this? Boy was created in 1912 by your calendar. I was created in 1915. If it's alright, I'd like to end the interview. We'll have more questions for you, but we'll need to check out some of your information. Certainly. Please let me know if you need me again. Very interesting. People turn to rock. SCP-1281 Object Class Safe SCP-1281 is a biomechanical entity found in the Cooper Belt during the standard containment of SCP-2362. It's roughly teardrop shaped, with a flattened section designated at the bottom of the entity. It measures 12 meters from end to end, and it's 11 meters in circumference at its widest point. Opposite, there is a significant bulge, which is believed to store the majority of its analysis equipment. There are several disc-shaped structures on its surface that are presumed to be receivers like for various like forms of electromagnetic radiation, as well as lodging-shaped capsules of unknown purpose. Several areas on its surface are broken, suggesting more appendages were once present. Biological components appear to have grown over a mechanical frame, evidently designed to live in deep space. When observed, the entity seems to have difficulty coping with temperatures much warmer than the Cooper Belt. Its surface temperature was 50 Kelvin when first found. SCP-1281 was apparently once capable of interstellar travel, but most of its systems were damaged by an unknown event that left it stranded. Dating methods suggest that it's been around for at least 1.3 billion years, though much of that time was spent dormant. The entity me? was almost entirely dormant when it was found. The only signs that it was active were faint lights running along its surface. Observation and experimentation showed that these were in response to radio waves. It has apparently been collecting signals for some time, but no signs of other functions could be detected until Foundation assets approached, at which point it began broadcasting. It was able to break foundation decryption in less than one hour, at which point it began broadcasting binary signals in an attempt to communicate, starting with extremely simple mathematical concepts. However, after a report was transmitted back to Earth, it stopped broadcasting for several days. The temperature of its dorsal bulge heated by 5 Kelvin during this time, apparently from processing the information. SCP-1281 is kept at Outpost 12009. Monitoring equipment are installed around and within the entity in case it should ever become active again. Any proposals for study that might damage SCP-1281 are routed through command.
we go. SCP-5052, Object Class, Euclid. So no SCP-5052 comprises the wreckage of two spacecraft believed to be extraterrestrial in origin. Located in the mountainous region in the southern Sahara Desert, external methods of propulsion have not been identified for either vessel. 5052-1 is a spacecraft estimated to have originally been approximately 900 meters in length and 250 meters in diameter. It has suffered catastrophic damage to its structure. The bow and stern of the vessel lie completely separated, with each section measuring approximately 400 meters in length. Evidence of an impact marks the port side of the front half, with the region approximately 50 meters deep and 150 meters long sheared off. Further major structural damage is present around the rest of the hull of the vessel, with large portions of the undercarriage crushed, with over 700 individual pieces of wreckage catalogued. It's almost entirely buried in sand, and sonar scanning of the hull suggests it sits in a crater, presumably resulting from its impact with the ground. 5052-2 is a spacecraft measuring almost 4,000 meters in length and 650 meters in diameter. Nestled in a valley between two mountain peaks 14 kilometers to the southwest of SCP-5052-1. Its hull shows heavy damage from some form of bombardment, with at least 125 punctures identified. Each is between 3 and 14 meters in diameter, and breaches tens to hundreds of meters deep into the structure, with scorch and burn marks suggesting they were caused by some form of radiation or plasma-based weapon. 5052-1 also bears heavy damage on the starboard side of its hull, with a single massive breach in the hull almost a kilometer in length and 200 meters wide. The hulls of both vessels are marked with a multitude of large glyphs, made from a distinct but currently unidentified metal alloy emblazoned onto the surface of the hulls. These glyphs are broadly triangular in shape, each compromised of distinct, intricate repeating patterns which collectively have cognitohazardous properties. The glyphs on the surface of SCP-5052-2 tend to induce minor headaches, feelings of passivity, and a desire to return to one's home, though it should be noted that no glyph is fully intact. The glyphs of the intact regions of the hull of SCP-5052-1 are slightly distorted with the warping of the hull, but even brief exposure induces severe and lasting feelings of inadequacy and a desire to serve others. Two hemispheric exclusion zones 15 kilometers in radius are maintained around the sites compromising SCP-5052. These exclusion zones extend to the airspace around and above the civilian flights strictly prohibited around the region, under the cover story of unpredictable extreme weather conditions due to mountainous terrain. Due to the regularly inhospitable conditions around 5052, its remote location, and the size of the region requiring surveillance, Observation of the perimeter is performed mainly through a series of cameras, helicopters, and remote-controlled aerial drones. Satellite scans of the exclusion zone are performed at least twice daily. Class A and C amnesthetics are authorized for use in the event of civilian encroachment. All researchers authorized to enter SCP-5052 are equipped with grade B or better cognitohazard filters in their helmets. The use of Scranton reality anchors within and around 5052 is carefully regulated and requires express permission from level 3 or higher personnel. Due to the relatively high aerial visibility of SCP-5052, standard VEL maintenance protocols with international space agencies are in place. Nomadic tribes who travel through the Southern Sahara have been aware of the presence of SCP-5052 for potentially thousands of years, though by this time their cultural memory leads them to avoid the area considering it haunted or sacred. The location was first identified by Foundation personnel in the 1980s, when the site was picked up by Cold War surveillance satellites. Teams were sent to scout for further information in the area, whereupon they made contact with local nomads. The Bedouin tribes had stories of the area breaking the minds of men, and an investigatory team was sent, whereupon they discovered the remains of 5052-1 in early 1984. SCP-5052-2, due to its inaccessible location in the mountainous terrain, was not adequately scouted until later that year. Did you enjoy the video? Why not click the bell icon and subscribe Finally. to- Man, that was... That was long. Man, I'm so tired. Okay. It's 10.04 p.m. 
we get now. It, well, it's Friday, of course, and I'm recording in this time. <laughs> well, folks, I hope you enjoy this. And much of I truly like space, of course, space might be scary and all. But if you did play Dead Space, that sort of thing, it would be much terrifying. Or if you're in the universe of aliens or other horror space movies and whatnot, it will be very terrifying. Well, that's all for this today. Hope you enjoyed this. This is Lord of Flames here. I will see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day.